It's been nearly 60 years since the last museum show of Alexander Calder's art in the Boston area, even though he had a studio right here in New England. The drought is over now, though, thanks to a show at the Peabody Essex Museum. Run to it, says WGBH News arts editor Jared Bowen. Then take your time. In Alexander Calder's work, there is a quiet calling. It takes time to drink in his sculpture with its ever so delicate dance. Calder himself once remarked, it must not just be a fleeting moment. The notion that you could stand in front of something and wait to see if it moves, how it moves, just automatically slows you down. It means that you have to take a lot of time to look carefully. By working in movement, Calder near single-handedly changed the definition of sculpture, rejecting tradition and those carved masses for which his own prominent family of sculptors was known. Calder is one of these people who was in the right place at the right time. Linda Roscoe Hardigan has overseen this installation of Calder's work at the Peabody Essex Museum. It traces his career, beginning with his search for the new, which took him to Paris. Throughout the 1920s and 30s, he immersed himself in that city's avant-garde group. All this ferment was happening. You know, how do you write differently? How do you create different kinds of music? How do you create a new kind of art? He really knew how to connect with people and really got involved with artists like Marcel Duchamp and Mondrian. That led to Calder's lifelong fascination with movement and form what many an observer has deemed his own ballets. When you think about how a dancer moves, so much of it is about balance. Also, I think when you go through this exhibition, you begin to see that there are conversations, there's partnerships among some of the works, and so you could say that it's like choreography, you could also say that it's theatrical because it's performative. It certainly helped that the mathematically-minded Calder brought a hefty engineering prowess to his Connecticut studio, where he made all of his own pieces using simple hand tools. He had a degree in mechanical engineering. You know, just the notion of where you would um, attach weight or release weight, how far you can extend before it goes whoppy jawed in a way that you, that you don't want. Sophisticated yet simple and basic principles of physics. Along with a very limited color palette. Calder loved black and white, Hardigan says, for its impact and contrast although the show is punctuated with color. Red is the color that he felt could really stand up to the black and white. Yellow and blue, the other two primaries, become the colors that he thought had good opportunities for um, accent points. Apparently, absolutely detested the color green. Throughout his lifetime, Calder remained a hugely popular artist. He began making large-scale public art, interacting with audiences just as his mobiles and stabiles had, but in a grand way. He really felt like if he could make large outdoor sculpture that could engage people's appreciation of space and place and architecture, uh, that that could enhance their lives. Calder died in 1976. His work has been much debated in the intervening years, with critics targeting him perhaps because of his popularity. But Hardigan says nearly 40 years after Calder's death, there's no question that he remains one of the 20th century's most profound creators. The reason for his popularity is also the reason for his actual success as an artist because he was so committed to change. I mean, you cannot engage with space now without understanding what he's helped uh, us interact with as sculpture. Emily, I'm showing my hand Aww. here because I've always loved Calder yeah, and I have been waiting for the show for so long and I loved how they've uh, presented all of his work here so that you get this sense of how he built from the, that time when he went to Paris and he was going back and forth to Paris in the 1920s and 30s. He would go back and forth, back and forth and, and work with this incredible group. You just look at this time mm -hmm. now with all of these artists working then who would really define the art of the new and where art was going in the 20th century and then took that back to sculpture and it is remarkable for the fact that his family was a very prominent family of sculptures, just chiseling away at marble and granite, our very traditional notions of sculpture, and he changed all of that. The, the whole notion of a mobile didn't yes, even exist, didn't exist until Alexander Calder so, created it. 
that explains everything. I mean, he was a mechanical engineer. It's, it's so interesting that great musicians are often also mechanically, they are physics oriented, so it makes perfect sense. He, he has to have such, uh, it, it's just mind boggling. You really can't apply the word genius to mm -hmm. him for the fact that he could create something that was so aesthetically different mm -hmm. and bold and beautiful and you can appreciate these shapes and how they moved mm -hmm. and then the introduction of colors. But beyond all of that, that he was crafting these pieces himself with this mathematical mind and, and had to work so deliberately and carefully yeah. because you don't even notice the weights. Yeah. You don't even notice the, the physics of, of it all until you really start to look mm -hmm. at it because you're just so bowled over by the aesthetics. So what has taken 60 years to bring all this together? I have no <laughs> idea. I think it's absolutely ludicrous. So that's why it's so exciting. This is organized by the Los Angeles County Museum mm. of Art and it's making oh, so it's, it's traveling. Own, it's traveling. Well, it's making its only East Coast stop here at, yeah. at the Peabody Essex Museum. And it's also a different experience, I'll mention just quickly, because they have uh, avant-garde music playing through the gallery oh. too. Not necessarily, he did, apparently didn't like to listen to music while he worked, but you hear it here. All right, Jared, that's great. Thanks for that.